CBS 46 News presents Public Affairs on Peach. Good morning and welcome to Public Affairs on Peach. I'm Karen Greer. For the past month, we've taken a deep dive into Georgia's juvenile justice system. We've called in teens, trauma, and trouble. And a lot of that trouble comes in the form of gangs. As gangs have grown increasingly violent, so has their reach for recruiting younger and younger members. And urban areas aren't the only targets. CBS 46 has followed the story for more than a year, and our anchor Ben Swan learned that even some of the quietest suburbs are now dealing with the issue. Uh, this is all Bloods territory. The Bloods gang has a hold on Gwinnett County. We've worked a number of cases uh, in here where, in Cannonball, where uh, Blood gang members are um, taking advantage of, of uh, runaways. Uh, young girls, putting them to work as early as the ages of uh, 13 to 14 years old. Heavily populated with businesses and homes, the suburbs are lucrative for armed robberies, theft, and trafficking. Clayton County police are still trying to track down two gang members suspected in killing a 15-year-old boy and his 11-year-old sister last year. Innocent targets of gang retaliation. Getting these people or this person off the street will probably save someone else's life because they have demonstrated what they are willing to do and will do. It is a problem that is not likely going away. They're recruiting younger kids. Um, their numbers are way up. They're bringing people from other states. And you're listening to a little rap and hip-hop music in here, right? But you guys are saying also that you'll go and, and just get stuff from street artists and listen to that because it helps you to understand the culture also because that's where you're going to find some of that culture, right? Right. Th these guys want to get out what they're doing and they a lot of them, they'll do it through music. In the last two years, Cobb County District Attorney Vic Reynolds hired two prosecutors dedicated strictly to gang cases. We've seen a spike in entering autos in certain areas of the county committed in, in great portion by young gang members, and, and by that I mean sometimes 14, 15 year olds. His office works with police to make sure members are charged with gang-related crimes that, if convicted, carry longer prison time. Even if it's a murder case, you begin with proving the individuals in a gang, and that murder happened in furtherance of that gang, and so that's the way that you go about stopping gang activity. Mello gang unit, that's easy, right? In Gwinnett, Detective Mello says Blood's membership is well into the hundreds, rivaling that of the Gangsta Disciples, which also have ties there. Generally, these two don't get along, but what we're seeing nowadays, these gangs, they don't have the uh, con consistent enemies as they had in the past because all it's about nowadays is making money. So if they can make money together, they make money together. Members pay dues between 40 and $200 a month to gang leaders in prison who continue to call the shots. Most of those dues are getting put on their books um, in the county or state prisons or even federal prisons. But since the Gwinnett gang unit started last April, there has been progress. But you feel like it's better. It, it, it's certainly getting better in terms of being able to break down some of those, those um, the structures of those gangs. Yes, with, with the folks they've given us to create the actual gang task force that we have, it has definitely put a dent in what we've uh, wanted to accomplish. And joining us now, Gwinnett County Police Detective James Mello, who you just saw in that piece talking about uh, the gang problem we are seeing, and a face that if you've been in Atlanta or anywhere in the country, you know for sure. Uh, we love to call her Judge Glenda Hatchett. She is our favorite judge. We thank you both. Former you. Fulton County Juvenile Court Judge, actually the head. Yes, the chief judge. Chief judge of yes. Fulton County. So I want to start with you, Detective Mello. How serious is this gang problem? It's, it's very serious. Um, People need to be concerned. They need to keep their eyes open. Uh, they need to watch out for their children because these gang members are out there. They're looking to take advantage of young kids. And if parents don't stay on top of it, they're going to have a serious issue at home. That's true. And, you know, Judge Hadgett, we've been with you for many years. Yes. And even sat in your courtroom with cameras and watching some of the cases that came through your doors. Can you believe that it seems like it's getting worse? Yes, and I will tell you that we have got to give voice to it. And I just really want to thank you. And I want to thank um, CBS 46 for this long series. This is not just a one series uh, piece that this is really going into in depth. And that's going to make all the difference because so much of this is about awareness. It is about being sensitized. It is about understanding that this is not just their problem. It is collectively all of our problems, and it affects, as this piece is demonstrating, everybody. If I could take just 
two, well, two seconds. You can take as me. much time as you want, Judge I want I want to <laughs> tell you about a story that I think will help us to really define this conversation um, today. And that is, I had a mother come to me um, as when I was juvenile court judge, chief judge of the Fulton County Juvenile Court, and she was hysterical. And they said, Judge, she needs to see you. And of course, I saw her. And she said, please, 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 please find my baby. Please find my daughter. If you don't find her, the gang is going to kill her. This is the background of the story. She had left home. She had not been home in six months. Now, you know, I leave home six months. I may as well just go on the ground like my mom and daddy. <laughs> You're not I mean, coming back. Uh-uh, no, oh, no, 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 no. You know, if I'm gone for a few, you know, you, it's just a different kind of situation to think that you don't know where your child is for six months. So fast forward the story. She comes in. She asks us to find her. Fortunately, we did. But I had to take the child into protective custody. And she's begging me. I'm kind of fast forwarding the story, begging me, Judge, please, please, please. She's my only child. Don't take her. And I said... If I don't take her and put her in protective custody, I'm signing her death warrant. She'll be gone. And yours too. But what happened is that she had been in a gang. The gang initiation got progressively worse. First she had to steal something, then she had to steal a car, then she had to break in, then there was arm robbery, then she had to have sex with one of the gang members, then she was gang raped by the, sec by the gang members, and then, and then she was ordered to kill somebody. Mm. And that's when she ran. But, you know, this is not like the Girl Scouts. You don't just decide you're going to get out the gang. And so, again, fast forward the story, she ran, and they came to her mother, thinking her mother was hiding her, and beat her mother up. Her mother didn't know where she was. And so at the end of this, I'm saying, I've got to take her into custody. I've got to what? protect her. And the thing that really, really is just so distressing and heartbreaking, any other words, is that the person she was ordered to kill was her own mother. To show allegiance, to show a commitment that the gang was her family. And in order to say that, she had to kill her mother to sever all the ties. With that, we're taking a break. <laughs> We're going to have much more, a lot of questions for both of you when we come back. You're watching Public Affairs on Peach. Don't go anywhere. That's what's frightening. And, and that's what you're seeing. Mm -hmm.